Hello everyone. Um, I am recording this video. I've had a lot of questions about the student project, like what's supposed to happen, like what are you supposed to do and everything. And so something I kind of want to show you really quickly here. Um, if you look on the main page, um, when you go down to the module, just kind of showing you where everything is. All right, so you'll have the chemical test video. And all this is, is this is just video of seeing what positive and negative chemical test results look like right it's just something for you to see and then um, you'll need the MSDS because this is going to help you do your safety chart all right and then you have the quiz of course after you do the quiz then you'll have access to unknown P and unknown B all right and so if you're in the five week if you're in the 10 week it's a different unknown all right, so when you go, so what you're gonna do after you finish the quiz, you haven't really done anything yet except for you've, you've kind of went through the, the video. I think it's only like five minutes long, um, and you uh, you've went ahead and downloaded that MSDS so that has all of the safety on on every chemical possible. You're not gonna list every chemical possible. You're going to keep the chemicals simple to what you would have used if you were in the lab. So, how do you know what you would have used? You're gonna use unknown P and unknown B to tell you that, right? Because if you go here to unknown P and you open it up, you see what you have here. You have NMR, you have IR, and you have mass spec for both for unknown P and B. So you're gonna use this spectra. This is the first thing you're doing for your experiment. You're gonna use this spectra to one, go to the IR. You know, let me open it up some. So let's go to the IR. What functional groups are present? I'm not, I'm not analyzing this for you. So you're gonna have to do that. So what functional groups are present, right? What am I gonna pay attention to? All right, so I know what functional group I have. So what does that tell me? That tells me a lot. Just in knowing the functional group, it tells me what chemical tests I'm going to use, right? If I go to my manual here, when I look for my chemical tests, see part one chemical test for identification. Here's all the different groups you can have for alkanes, alkenes, alkalides, small alcohols, large alcohols, and ethers. And so you see here how the alcohols has two different ones, small versus large. Right, the chemical tests are very similar for four of these for the alcohols, um, in particular. Right, you have the Lucas test, and so here's kind of an example of what the reaction would look like. And you saw a visual confirmation of what this would look like in the video. All right, we also have the chromic acid test. So those are the two chemical tests that you would have done and performed, and you want to recreate these. Um, so like, let's say you had an alcohol. Right, so you would want to use your specific alcohol. You wouldn't just be telling me that your compound was an alcohol. You need to get the specific structure of it, and you would recreate this, uh, say this reaction or this reaction, right, based off of what alcohol you had, right. <clears throat> and so, if you had a primary alcohol, I need the structure of that alcohol. And then I need the specific structure of that carboxylic acid that forms from that alcohol. Okay, you have to be specific. Um, all right, so then from there, just looking at the IR, knowing the functional groups, I knew what tests I needed to use, right? And then to figure out everything, well, <clears throat> I have a mass spec here for my compound as well. So that's going to give me round about the mass, right? That's what that parent peak tells me. It tells me the mass of my alcohol. All right, and then from there, I can even try and kind of figure out, um, well, I don't know if it's an alcohol or not. Anyway, so I'm going to um, roundabout uh, use uh, this parent peak and these larger peaks to kind of give me an idea of what fragments are being lost at each big chunk, right? So like, from here, there's my parent, right? It's identified for me. There's my parent peak. And then I look at this cluster of peaks. There I have that, my base peak. And so if I look at the mass difference from this peak to, to this peak, what is it? What's that mass difference? So what left the molecule? What was fragmented off? And then I might go from, and then if I look at the next cluster, I've got these two. Uh, these are kind of two clusters that are kind of merged together, it looks like. So I could say, well, what leaves, when I look at the mass difference from this peak, uh, I think it's 56 to say that peak, right? 
so that would be 40, 1, 2, 3, 43. All right, I could look, well, what's that mass difference? Can I figure out what that is? If not, I have this other tall one as well. So I could go from uh, 56 to now 41 and say, okay, well, what left there? Okay, so this is kind of helping you a little bit with structure and with mass. All right, um, but of course, as we know, the best way to determine our mat, uh, our structure is going to be to use the proton NMR. And so here I can use this to give me more information about structure. Okay. All right. So, you know, the splitting, the, you, it, you see how many hydrogens there are, right? So there's a total of three, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a total of 10 hydrogens there. So you have a real good idea of approximately how big this thing is. All right. So, you know, you got 10 hydrogens. You know your parent mass, right? You know the mass of the molecule. So, all right, well, besides carbon, what else is there? If there's something besides carbon, use that to tell you, right? Okay, so what have we done? We've used the IR. Oh, sorry, we've used the IR to tell us what functional groups are present. Then we went and we said, okay, so these are the chemical tests I would expect to have done, right? And so let me circle those for later because I'm going to have to come back and be specific with those reactions, put my specific molecule in those reactions. All right. And then I come down here, I kind of figure out the mass and I figure out the structure. All right. Because, you know, mass spec, as we learned, can also tell us a lot about um, what functional groups are present as well. So that's something to pay attention to. All right. Um, and then I can use my NMR, proton NMR, to give me a lot of structure detail. And then carbon 13 will just kind of confirm it for me, all right? But that's everything that we have for that. So what would be, what would have been expected? All of these spectra are going to tell you the functional group and the structure. So from there, that's when you're going to come in here and you're going to say, okay, well, I know some components that are required, right? Here, what to turn in, which adds up to 200 points, 100 points per compound. Right. I need the pre-lab portion, which is typically like face to face pre-lab would be the safety information for the knowns and reagent compounds and then a brief one to two paragraph introduction. Right. The gist of this is I have to use all of my organic knowledge that I have at this point to <clears throat> use chemical tests and spectra to properly and correctly identify compounds. Right. So something like that is what you're looking at for a brief introduction right then you're going to have your analysis of the knowns which the analysis of the knowns right your knowns are going to be 12 known compounds right so there's your known compounds what are they going to react with right you should kind of know what they're going to react with right as you go through all these chemical tests right they're labeled based off of what they are so when you look at these you can round about estimate what you should see Okay, and you don't have to you don't have to do specific reactions with these. You can just say, you know, as a confirmation, this is what I expect from my alkyl halides, right? Um, for those tests, I have my sodium iodide acetone test, and I have my silver nitrate test. So for those, if I remember correctly from the substitution experiment, what what would this test for? What specific types of alkyl halides, right? Go back to nucleophilic substitution figure out is this following the SN1 or the SN2 route look at the silver nitrate is it following the SN2 or the SN1 route All right so that's what we have to figure out and then we know from there what type of alkyl halides undergo SN1 what type prefer SN2 right and then we did have a couple that could have done both right hopefully you recall that if you don't you need to go back to that but um, so then you're gonna say alright so for my alkyl halides right I have primary secondary and tertiary so you know, primary and sec, so primary is going to do preferably one of these, right, A or B, and then the tertiary is going to do the other, while secondary can do a mixture of the two, right, we know that, hopefully, all right, anyway, so then from there, I just say, based off my knowns, this is what I expect to see, right, um, and then, or, you know, and also with your small alcohols and your large alcohols, this is what I would expect to see, and if you get down to the bottom for alkanes and ethers, uh, if you notice, da -da 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 -da, here's all my chemical tests. Alkanes and ethers, how are you going to determine these functional groups, right? What would you expect from all of those chemical tests? Negative results. 
all right so that helps you put in that bit of information all right and you're just going to need to go through this little checklist right here point by point all right and then here it says the flow chart of your two unknowns it's talking about this flow chart so you've already gone through all that spectra and so you you have an idea of what functional group you have so follow the flow chart right so like an alkene in water is it going to be soluble or insoluble well you would expect it to be insoluble right that's why it's listed right there and so then the next step would be for my alkene if that's what I got based off my spectra what would I expect with sulfuric acid would I expect it to be soluble or insoluble in sulfuric acid well it will undergo a reaction in sulfuric acid so I would expect it to be soluble all right that's what we're looking for that's that's as simple as you don't have to recreate uh, every point on this flow chart you just say I would have taken the alkene thrown it in water and I would have found that it was insoluble so then I would have thrown it in sulfuric acid and found that it was soluble that's it that's your flow chart right you can you can draw it out where you literally just say here's a box where I wrote the word alkene and then I have an I have this line coming down with water and then I don't even do I don't even do this side I just have my little line going over here to say it was insoluble so then I threw it in sulfuric acid and I found that it was soluble or I would have found that it was soluble right I mean a lot of this is speculation because you're not actually doing these things so it's okay if you put it in terms of this is what I would have done all right that's completely fine all right and then of course your IR analysis and your NMR and your mass spec analysis those are all things that you're gonna wanna you want to write it up or type it up but you could also um, in the spectra like you can write on this and you can put identifying marks right so like say if you draw out your structure and you label all of your different hydrogens as as a so these are the a hydrogens these are the b hydrogens these are c and these are d if that's what you do just redraw that structure elaborate showing the hydrogens and then label those specific types of hydrogens as a b c and d okay same thing with when you do your carbon 13 redraw the structure focusing on the carbons right we don't need to see hydrogens in that structure and label each carbon as you have four peaks right so a b c and d right okay um, and then from here right you can literally just take like certain peaks so that's a big one I'd circle that one maybe you want to circle that one maybe you want to circle that one maybe you want to circle that one circle that one and then you can just put right in your lab report based off the peak circled at approximately was that 31 32 33 at approximately 3300 that corresponds to this type of stretching right you just put that kind of stuff in the lab report you're right up okay um, and then uh, you will want to have like a portion where you draw the structure of your unknown um, based off of all of your analysis so you could have like a conclusions where you write your br brief conclusion and you draw the unknown structure right and that's it right so seven and eight can kind of be lumped together but what I would recommend you do especially for um, for your lab report right have one lab report one lab report have one of them then what you're gonna do is you're gonna say okay so uh, analysis write up for unknown P right that's what this one's labeled as right analysis write up for unknown P if you don't have unknown P don't write that in your lab report okay so then analysis write up for unknown P and then you would draw the flow chart right do the flow chart for P talk about the chemical tests that you would have done for P and the specific reactions you would have seen for P then you can reference your um, spectra work uh, your spectra worksheet that you would have hopefully printed out and then start writing up like the specific peaks that you analyzed and then do the same thing with the NMRs and the mass spec and then after that draw the unknown structure and then say in conclusion our unknown structure my unknown structure is believed to be this for for unknown P um, yada 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 right I mean that's it and then do the same thing for the other unknown okay so you can have two conclusions right because you have a conclusion for unknown P and then I think the other one is B you have a then you'll have like a, a an analysis and conclusion for the other unknown right unknown B well you don't need to see that stuff where is it 
yeah, unknown B. All right, and that's it. That's all you got to do. Okay. All right. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to email me. I just had a lot of questions, so I was like, it's going to be hard to write this up in an email like 15 times. So I'm just going to post this. All right. Well, good luck. Adios, amigos.